First question I have for you is, especially after sitting through this, are you concerned that the Republicans are actually helping Russia out by holding hearings like this and having this impeachment inquiry? Absolutely, because the bottom line is they're not getting down to the truth. All they're doing is pushing the same Russian narrative and propaganda. They're filibustering. I was there for eight hours expecting to go over all of the stuff and letting them ask me, grill me questions to get to the bottom to the truth. And they didn't ask me one question except for Matt Gates coming in towards the very end and trying to filibuster and try and make believe that I was a criminal while they had a guy from prison testifying. It doesn't make sense. So explain to me why you know why you're so certain that a lot of this is Russian disinformation? Well, I was a point person on the ground, not only for Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump, but uh, for Devin Nunez and Derek Carvey, who his uh, assistant. I was also working with uh, John Solomon and Victoria Tunzing, Jody Genova, uh, also people like Ron Johnson, Lindsey Graham. I mean, I was working everything that had to do with Ukraine. I became the point person, so I know uh, Everything they have, majority of the stuff that they're putting up there in these hearings are stuff that I produced and gave them and that I knew that they were false and they were fake, but they still pushed them. Do you think that Russia is still trying to intervene with this upcoming election? Oh, absolutely. More than ever, because uh, this election is a lifeline for Vladimir Putin with the war that's going on in Ukraine. If he understands Trump has given him eno enough messages directly telling him that if he wins, he will stop all aid to Ukraine, which gives uh, Russia an upper hand in the win. So this election is not just for the United States, but Vladimir Putin is extremely important and it will do everything in their power, the Russians, to have uh, Donald Trump win this year. So probably a question skeptical people might be asking about your involvement in sure. this is, you know, at one point you were, you know, part of the Trump organization. You were part of this effort to, to help Donald Trump. Absolutely. What, what made you change? Why did you flip? Uh, it wasn't flipping so much. I mean, uh, when I was f w with Donald Trump, I truly believed I was doing stuff to save our democracy. I truly believed that the president could never do anything wrong. And so uh, when I was doing it, I thought I was doing right. When I got arrested and had time to get away out of that mega cult uh, scenario and I had time to reflect and to see how things started playing out, how they started this pretending they didn't know me, pretending, you know, not talking and stuff like that, I started realizing that I'm being set up to be the fall guy. Because when the beginning, it was all set up that when this whole breaking news is going to happen, I was going to be the guy that brings the evidence. And now I'm watching that now they're trying to silence me and it didn't make sense. I understood something was wrong. And that's what started making me think and look into what was going on. Hey, a lot of the Republicans involved in this impeachment inquiry, they seem convinced that there's hard evidence linking President Biden to his son's business dealings, to corruption in Ukraine. I mean, that was your job to go find it, right? Yeah. What did you find? See, the funny part is they, they were never convinced. The majority of these people, when, I, when we brought this information in 2019, they didn't look at it. I mean, there was a very small group of people that were really, you know, even interested. In the majority of the Republicans, they want to deal with it because they knew it was false, it was fake, and it was not true. But then Donald Trump, you know, took it to the next level after he lost the election. And now it's his uh, kind of like he f says that the election was stolen. The only two things he could talk about is election stolen and the Biden crime family. And that's their only thing that they're running with. But at the end of the day, they have no facts to either one of them. Both of them are lies. So what would you say to your critics that say, I mean, you are a, a convicted fellow, right? You spent, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You spent time in jail. Absolutely. You know, how would you respond to questions about your own credibility? Well, you know, first of all, you have to judge people on what they do today, not what they did yesterday. You could be the best person, but if you mess up today, what does that mean? You could be the worst person, but if you decide to do good going forward, what does that mean? So we have to base people on their actions, what they do. Yes, what I did previously was wrong, and I admitted it, and I served my time, and I had time to reflect, and I've become a better person. I've been able to use the time that I was in prison to better myself to and to be a better father, a better human being. And now I'm basically trying to do right by telling the truth at a very big cost to me and my family between the death threats and having some of the highest people in, in our country going after me uh, I still feel like you know it's my job as a human being as an American citizen to come out and give the truth and to make amends of what I did to cause this and you testified today that Donald Trump himself was part of the operation that you were involved in talk oh. to me about that 
Donald Trump is the godfather. He's the head honcho. He, of course, he was aware. See, people don't understand that Donald Trump is a micromanager. He gets involved into the militia, and he wants to know everything that's going on. So after every meeting, after every conversation, Rudy would call him and bring him up to speed. He knew every part of the set of what was going on, where I went, who I met with, what information we got, what articles coming out, what John Solomon's going to say, what Sean Hannity. He, he met, I mean, he was aware and managed everything. And Rudy Giuliani responded to your testimony today. He said you're just trying to sell books, that you can't be trusted, that you're a liar. What would you say to your former associate? Like I saw, said to him all the time, I challenge Rudy Giuliani anytime, any place, one-on-one in front of the world. He could bring his facts, I'll bring my facts, and we'll let the world decide. He keeps calling me a liar. Matt Gates called me a liar. But the crazy part is, what am I lying about? They don't say I'm a, they try to say I'm a convicted liar. Okay, I lied, I was convicted. I went to prison, I paid my due. But now I'm telling you things that, are, that I've witnessed. I was there. If I'm lying about it, show me the facts. Confront me on the lies that I'm telling you about the president, what happened in Ukraine. Don't call me a liar because I lied on something that had nothing to do with this and try to refuse. So, uh, yeah, and not only that, but everything I say, like I said, I have the facts. I bring the receipts. I have text messages, emails. Uh, I just found an email like uh, recently. I thought it was going to come out in the hearing, but unfortunately, because of the Republicans filibustering, I mean, uh, John Solomon handed over to me one day all of Hunter Biden's uh, bank record statements. When I asked him when he got it, he said to me, we have friends in the FBI. I forgot all about that. When I got arrested, I had all these bank records, and they're telling me, how did you get Hunter Biden's bank records? I said, well, the FBI gave it to John Solomon. Everybody thought I was crazy. A couple of weeks ago, I'm going through my files, and lo and behold, I find an email from John Solomon basically telling me that, hey, I just got these emails from the FBI to Hunter Biden, and I need you to check them out with the records against uh, the bank in the Ukraine. So, I mean, it's stuff like that. It was a lot of underhanded stuff. I mean, it was do whatever it takes to get the uh, to get the message out. And the reason why is because they were frustrated because with being the president, with being Rudy Giuliani, with being Devin, all of this powerful they had, they couldn't get the rest of the world and the media to believe their garbage. And that would drive their frustration more and more. And that's why, you know, they started going through the halls of Congress. And now we're here in, the, in this fake impeachment because the rest of the world knows it's fake. And they all know it's fake. They all know the truth because they've seen all this stuff. I've spoken to a lot of them when they didn't want to take the stuff. And now they're sitting here pretending like this is some big thing that is. They know it's a lie. They know Joe Biden did nothing wrong. They know this is all a propaganda from Russia. And that's the sad part because they're giving Russia a platform right now. Because right now, where we're sitting here, I guarantee you, all over Russia media, they're playing all of these re re Republican congressmen talking points and saying, look at America. So let me ask you that, maybe drill down on that yeah. even a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, sure. Do you think the average American understands how Russia uses what's happening here in the United States to, to continue their prop propaganda machine over there? No, I don't think so, because we don't see what goes on over there. So we just speculate or hear from little bits and pieces. But if uh, somebody like myself that's been there, lived there, worked there, knows what it's about, it's a major propaganda machine because all the television stations, all they're playing right now are clips of Matt Gates, of Comer, of Jordan, and all of this stuff talking about how bad we are and how good Vladimir Putin is, how bad Ukraine is, how bad. And it just drives, you know, so any of the people that have a doubt, they lose that out, and that drives that propaganda machine even more. So basically, our congressmen and senators are doing the work for Vladimir Putin. I mean, you said this under oath today. Yes. That it was your belief that Rudy Giuliani knew at the time that the information that he was provided was Rus Russian disinformation. How did you know that? And and how did did you ever call him on it? Like explain that well, how that went out. A couple of things. First of all, the people that he was dealing with uh, uh, were, uh, were t I was tasked to. Uh, validate them and uh, you know before Rudy spoke to them and when I found out that they were working with the Russians I told that to Rudy and Rudy understood that but Rudy told me he would stop working with them but he was working behind my back and continued and after my arrest we saw that what happened that he was with them in Ukraine so Rudy knew just from what I was telling him but also we me and Rudy had lots of conversations because lots of the information a lot of times we would get would be similar to Russian disinformation we would compare it and Rudy said plenty of times he doesn't care where the information comes from he doesn't care if it's from China, the moon, Russia, as long as it fit the narrative and it gave him proof to show that Joe Biden did something wrong, it was good enough for Rudy. 
Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.